I really wanted to play with them again. I just, I don't want to be Silverchair. Mm. I don't want to be. And that's a hard, that was a hard thing to, to walk away from because that was my entire identity. 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 Friends, grab your popcorn, grab what you need to grab, and let's talk about and cry together about Silverchair and what's going on here. So if you don't know, here is the skippy of the latest news with Silverchair. And if you've been watching my videos, I've been talking about this and you know just pretty much gossiping about it as much as I can because it's huge news if you are a long if you're a lifer when it comes to Silverchair. And that's what I am, just a millennial lifer. But to get everyone on the same page, what has unfolded here as of late? Ben and Chris have put together a book talking about Silverchair and what has happened. And I'm saying this to put you where we're going to go here. More news has come out here with Silverchair. There was also a two-part doc made on top of this, which has been pulled from YouTube. I have seen both parts. You may be able to find it. It keeps getting pulled from YouTube. So if you can find it, congratulations. I think you should watch it. It is very encouraging. And yes, part two, you will cry. I guarantee you will cry. But if you haven't, let's talk about it. Let's go over it. And there's some things that are just kind of mind blowing when it comes to the interminglings of Silverchair and things that I was honestly shocked to find out w with what was going on right now with Ben and Chris. So obviously part one, I don't want to talk about too much. It goes right up. So part one, I've already covered a lot of, but it covers a lot of the genesis of Silverchair going right up to young and modern. And then it stops. Now, part two obviously picks up where Young and Modern comes out. Silverchair is on a high. They're blowing up once again. They're bigger than they've ever been. They go on tour. And this is where it does get very interesting for me personally because on this Young and Modern North American tour, I saw them three times. And when I did see them, I could tell that they had been drinking. And there was booze on stage. And they were actively drinking it. And I thought it was kind of odd, too, because this was kind of unusual behavior from what I had seen with Silverchair, even in diorama days. Daniel's looks, his everything was kind of changing. But we thought, hey, who cares? Silverchair is back together. This is fantastic. And Ben and Chris go over what was going on behind the scenes with that tour and Young and Modern being toured. All three of them were drinking. They were drinking, groupies, drugs. It was getting out of control. I mean, like majorly out of control. And this is them getting back together because they had kind of, I won't say broken up, but they had taken a little bit of a hiatus, got back together, made young and modern, blew up bigger than they ever had, won awards. And everybody was thinking like, oh my God, like, you know, Silverchair is huge right now. When I saw Silverchair live, it was a huge deal. It was almost like seeing Nirvana. Because I had spent a lot of my childhood thinking, this is a band that I am never going to see live, they're broken up, and they're never getting back together. But then they make an album that blows up and is actually really freaking good. But I do have to say this about this documentary, and this is where things can get really intense with emotions. Ben and Chris really do not rip Daniel apart. You can obviously see there's a friendship there that they want to rekindle. They miss Daniel. But they talk about the endings of Silverchair and really how they were all to blame. Ben goes into pretty good detail describing that his drinking was out of hand and that it seemed to be him and Daniel were the worst of the bunch. But also that Daniel was drinking and obviously indulging in other things. But too, you have to remember with this point in time, this is when Silverchair, like I said, got back together, came out with this album, it blew up, they were touring. They weren't playing the biggest shows by any means, especially in North America. But they were all single, Daniel was divorced, they had money in their pocket, they were living it up. And it just got crazy. Now, when Ben and Chris do talk about Daniel in the stock, they really don't say anything really mean. They do go into detail, especially more in the book, explaining why Silverchair broke up. Obviously, you know, creative differences. Uh, more than not, Daniel wanted full control of everything. And that they had just kind of grown apart, especially Daniel wanting to go in a different direction. and Just kind of being, from what Daniel said sick of Silverchair and just wanting to do his own thing. 
And when they finished up their young and modern tour, going back to Australia, trying to go right into the studio to work on their next album, it was obvious things were just not working. And this is when Ben would bring up that he found himself in a huge argument with Chris because Ben said he was drinking heavily and he said some really nasty things about Chris and his work towards the band and how it should be more this and more that. And at that point, it was pretty much just they, they were all done with each other. It was just a nasty, nasty breakup. Now, this is where a lot of stuff from this point has just been lost in the sauce with history. Once Silverchair broke up, most fans just knew it was because of creative differences. That's what was said, and that's what we lived with for over a decade. Now, everything that is in this doc now is completely stuff that we are just finding out the majority of fans because these guys have been so tight-lipped with what is going on in their personal life and what's been happening with Silverchair. So with that, Ben and Chris obviously the past few years have re reunited. They're both married, they have kids, they have you know a big life. They're dads. We go on to find out that Chris opened up a restaurant. Sadly, after years of building this restaurant, doing really well, it burned down. Chris gets cancer. He gets cleared from cancer. Then, just a year ago, he has a heart attack. He comes out of that. He has heart damage now. And one of the crazy things about this, too, is that Chris now is working at his wife's family motorcycle shop, which is totally cool because, you know, Chris says that he loves motorcycles. But it's just crazy that Chris, the bass player from Silverchair, is working at a motorcycle shop where you can just walk up and go see him. Ben is still making music, releasing music, and, you know, living in that world. And then Daniel is obviously off doing his whole thing. So talking about Daniel, you know, this is one of those situations where it's hard to point fingers at any of them because, you know, I'm really not even trying to, to be honest. I, I will say just from the perspective of the situation, it is easier to look at Daniel and get upset because you see Ben and Chris have come together. They're talking. They've worked out their differences. Now, obviously, with Daniel, you know, I, I think a lot of it, too, in the beginning was Daniel, you know, he would say this in every single interview the past, uh, you know, first five years of him splitting from Silverchair is that he wanted to be recognized as a solo artist. And I, I think he's done that. I think he's achieved that. The, the situation with that is, is that, you know, I don't think that Daniel is looking for fame and fortune. I, you know, I, I he's even said that even if you put a gun to his head and gave him a million dollars, he would not get back together with Silverchair. And obviously, I, I think it's more than just playing Silverchair songs at this point. I think it has a lot to do with just his relationship with Ben and Chris. And with Daniel's solo music, obviously, it is completely different than what Silverchair is. It's synth, it's electric drums, it's just rave, it's, you know, it's, it's nothing... I would say more or less than what Silverchair fans would be attracted to. I, I really, you know, everyone that I know that loves Silverchair, they're really not into what Daniel does. So I think Daniel targeted a whole different group of fans. And I'm sure he snagged the occasional Silverchair fan who just wanted to go see Daniel live, that lead singer guy from Silverchair. So obviously the big question from this point on is, where does Silverchair go from this point forward? You know, like I said, we've seen that Ben and Chris have a huge tight knit relationship now. Ben even cried in the dock, you know, explaining how he needed Chris. And man, it made me cry. It hit me. It hit me. And it's just, it, it just, it's sad, man. It's sad that Daniel's not there. And I've already talked about Silverchair so much, and I've seen a lot of people's comments. It's such a, such a 50-50 split, and maybe it's not even a 50-50 split. I think a lot of people at this point do believe that Silverchair is never getting back together. But, you know, I, I'm going to say that is not true. I, I think one day, and it, it may not be anytime soon, that... Silverchair will get back together. I mean, we've seen plenty of bands with really, really bad blood with each other who have openly, publicly said terrible things about their bandmates who have got back together. I mean, look at Guns N' Roses. Look at Smashing Pumpkins. 
So it's not like these things are impossible. It could definitely happen. But saying all of this, everything we've just talked about, obviously all eyes are on Daniel right now. He is the centerfold of the whole thing. Everyone is wanting to know what is going on with Daniel. Obviously, Daniel wanted nothing to do with the dog. He rejected talking in it, and um, he has been trying. To, his PR team has been ripping it off YouTube, uh, on you know everywhere they can. They do not want this thing up because it does. It makes Daniel look a little bad because he's not there to defend himself. But I do think they go light on Daniel. I, I do not think they rip him apart whatsoever in this doc from stuff that he's already done to himself publicly. Now, talking about Daniel publicly, it's been pretty much addressed at this point. You know, Daniel's had some issues with drunk driving, legal issues, obvious, obvious substance abuse here in the past few years. And it's obvious Daniel's in a really rough patch of life right now. And you know, there's a doc out there that Daniel kind of made about himself and he he's in his house and he's talking about, you know, he doesn't need Ben and Chris and, you know, he can play the drums, he can play guitar, he can sing, he can play bass, he doesn't need anybody, he can do it all himself and, and he plays all the instruments right there in front of you. The problem with that is, is that I, I truly believe, and I think this is where a lot of people argue with the whole silver chair and then Daniel side music solo career argue is that obviously yes Daniel is a huge part of Silverchair he is probably the majority of the vote I think that's pretty obvious but there is a huge argument to say as well is that I don't truly believe Daniel is going to make music that sounds like Silverchair without Ben and Chris there with their input and really pushing the narrative in a Silverchair direction because we have yet to see Daniel produce anything that is, I'm being very, I'm, I'm being nice here, I really am, even remotely catchy and good in the silver chair music world. I mean, Young and Modern was one of the last albums that Daniel made, or the last album that Daniel made with guitar, drums, all that stuff. And that album is beautiful. Young and Modern is an amazing orchestrated piece of music but we have yet to see Daniel produce anything like that since then he's made great music but it's not where it's capturing the world's attention by any means and really I don't even think Daniel cares I think a little piece of Daniel's solo career that we're starting to see unfold right here is that it is an fu to Silverchair almost where he's proving that he can make something totally different, totally unique, apart from Ben and Chris. And maybe that's why we can see so much turmoil in his own life, while Ben and Chris seem to be really happy and pretty healthy mentally. Not to say they haven't had their own demons in the past. But friends, that's going to be it for me talking about Silverchair for this video. I'm definitely going to continue to talk about the updated news with what's going on with them. BFs, until next time, take care. Shoot! Oh, <laughs>